So setting expectations is not just important for tryhard groups. It's also extremely important for groups at all levels. This is not simply a, oh, an elite thing. No, this is the opposite. This is a global thing. Setting expectations is so important at all levels of play. Right, daily, whoa, I need to go to these strikes, please. I, I presume uh, a lack mech, DPS a lack. Yes. I can be the DPS a lack mech. Uh, right, hang on a minute. It's a lack mech time, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's move! And look, now guys, this is actually very special. Big shout out for Zach for this, because I'm going to show you something very special. This... I mean, I feel like I'm going to curse them now, and we're just going to somehow int incredibly horribly. But take a look at this, guys. This is what happens when you ask for kill proof in a strike mission group, right? This is what happens when you have everyone uh, essentially tryharding. I'm actually going to buy some... F uh, actually, I don't, we probably drop food in there, right, actually? I can drop an ascended food. But yeah, this is going to be fast ice brood saga 5. Check this out. KP for shipping spells. Well, it's not about it. it well, he actually did. He actually drops thesis. Are you kidding me? That is actually ridiculous. <laughs> that is so crazy. What? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so we've just dropped like a really expensive consumable to get this done. But anyway, this is going to be fun, guys. So what you're going to notice here is that stuff is going to die fast. This is actually a relatively high kill proof group. Zach does this every day. He doesn't care about a gold per hour. He literally just burned probably, well, about the amount of gold we're going to make from this on just consumables. This is all about the fun. It's all about the speed running. It's all about the blast, right? That's what this is about. And what you'll notice is that there's going to be low downtime, high kill speed, big DPS, all that kind of fun stuff. Because I think this is this is actually something really important to highlight, actually. Um, and I think a bit of a disconnect in the Guild Wars 2 community is that I think a lot of people are like, why would you ever ask for kill proof? These bosses are so easy. That's not what that's about. A lot of the time, what people are looking for with kill proof is a smooth run. A smooth, clean, and fun run. Uh, which is kind of what you turn to, right? Whenever a game, one, isn't very difficult for experienced players, and two, doesn't release a lot of content, you naturally lean towards speed running, right? That's what you do. You know, you see this in older games, you see this in older content games or easy games like World of Warcraft Classic is a very easy game for experienced players. So the community naturally became very speedrun oriented because you don't get your challenge or kind of engagement from just beating the bosses because they're too easy. Um, you get your enjoyment because of how well you do them, being able to execute well and being able to smoothly clear this content, right, in a way that you find fun. And I think this is a really key disconnect in the Guild Wars 2 community. It creates a lot of this tension between uh, very experienced players and very new players. Very new players believe that they're being like giga gate kept and it's very heavy elitism on why they can't get into groups. But really, it's actually um, almost entirely because uh, experienced players are looking for fun, right? They're looking to complete the content in a specific way, in a way that they find enjoyable uh, to play through, which is kind of exactly what we're going to be seeing here. You'll actually notice that we're just flat out running zero healer. Um, for a lot of these as well. This is actually a zero healer group, I believe. I imagine we'll be going one healer for Bone Skinner, but until that point, it is going to be a zero healer setup. So this is just going to be pure damage dealers, because of course, there's not very much damage pressure on these strike missions. Now, this is a little bit scary. You're going to have to dodge a little bit, I think, in order to survive this, because we don't really have a healer. But that's fine. And you can see the boss absolutely getting crushed. And these kill times... It's pretty spicy. What I really do like about more organized group play is that you don't have downtime, right? There's nothing that is more like, oh, God, what's going on here? Than waiting for people to, know, like, get their pizza, right, walk the dog before you even actually play the game. You know, I guess I should be insta-leaving here, because if you insta-leave, it actually sends you the chests in the mail. So I'm causing downtime here. Okay, next boss, and we're already pumping. Right, and this is how you you also do coincidentally get some good efficiency, of course, right? You can end up, uh, you can you know like immediately end up with very very high energy here, uh, and you know we can be we're going to be clearing all these strikes and dragon storm probably within twenty minutes, which is very tasty gold per hour. 
I'm going to stow the mech here and then drop it down because um, Zach just remo I mentioned this and it's very true. Or actually, well, someone said this actually. Because these actually leap to the furthest target away and that actually includes mechs. So you want to make sure that the mech is on you immediately so that we can stack these effectively and blast. That's what this is. It's not just about the time, right, uh, either. Like, this is actually a really important thing to actually understand and think about. It's not just that. It's also about the enjoyment and the way the bosses are being killed here. Like, how quickly they're being killed, the DPS, the strategies, the, com uh, you, know, the, you know, the techniques being used. It's about the fun factor. And yeah, 38 second bears. That's what happens when you have good DPS. Playing in a group like this is simply just more fun, right? Um, you know, when you're an experienced player, this is the kind of group you want to be in. You don't want to be in a group that's taken 10 years to kill this um, and just really isn't delivering a very exciting encounter. Okay, we're going to go for CC here and then action key. Good. And you can see that bone's going to melt, guys. Look at that. We get another action key in as well, as you can see here. And here comes the damage. Oh, it looks like we actually are running maybe a double healer here. It looks like it's a heal herald. Uh, by the looks of this. A double heal herald situation. So we actually are running a little safer. Heal herald definitely very good here, of course. Because it has a lot of uh, very good sustained healing. So it can certainly do its job well. And let's blast this boss down. Someone is dead, but they're actually getting... They should get revived. And yeah, look at that, guys. That's one minute bone skin. I love to see it. Very nice. And this is kind of what people are looking for, right? I, I think this is a really important perspective. Big shout out to Zach for letting me into this group, actually, um, and inviting me to this group. Because it's, it's really important to understand this stuff. You know, I, I do think that a lot of the frustration and almost like animosity between different player groups is because the different player groups don't understand each other. They never interact with each other. And because they never interact with each other, um, that's where miscommunication happens. People think it's like, oh, I just don't want to play with you because you're new. It's nothing to do with that, right? It's everything to do with, I want to play with people who feel the same way as me. It's all about, I want to find players who are like-minded, right? And uh, are in the same place as me and have the same goals and same objectives and setting expectations, right? I would not join this group if I wasn't pretty confident that I could nail the mechanics and obviously execute DPS and have the correct build that they're looking for. Because I know that all these players want is to have some big blasting, right? They want to blast hard and blast fast. That's what they're looking for here. We're going to have probably about a minute left, as you can see here. This boss is essentially over at this stage. 9%. Yeah, it won't even use it. It's not even going to get to use its death move. Nah, it definitely won't. You can see that the boss is already over. GG. Boss actually didn't even have time to bug out. That's what we like to see. Job done. Another strike locked in. Easy. And Dragonstorm. Now on the final part. We're nearly done. Seriously, we're nearly done. Crazy. And I really think that I'd very encourage everyone just to look at how chill this is. How chill this is. How relaxed this is. And just how everyone's just blasting. Everyone's on the same page. Like, this is the dream with group content. I think this is what everyone wants, isn't it? Everyone's on the same page. Everyone's working together. Everyone's working towards the same goal, which is getting a big blaster run. Like, in a lot of ways, a group like this is the absolute model for what every single group should look like. If you're in a training group, it should be everyone on the same page, working towards the goal of learning the fight and clearing the boss. If you're in a more experienced group, it's more about farming and potentially getting good speed, right? This is the key part about making a group in any situation, any kind of group activity, the most important thing is setting expectations and having everyone on the same page. And this, what you've witnessed here, is the epitome of that, right? Um, is having everyone on the same page. And this, by the way, is why people are willing to wait a little bit and go for kill proof. Yes, you might end up taking a little bit more time to fill the group, um, but that's not the point. The point has never been about, like, real-time efficiency. The point has always been about what video games are all about, which is having fun, right? Is, is maximizing the enjoyment you get, right? And I, I think a lot of players would rather simply not play than play in a group without their expectations aligned. And I'd really liken this to PvP. Like, you know, I think, I think one of the most frustrating things about PvP, and I think everyone can relate to this, is where someone on your team gives up. Right? That sucks. It feels super, super bad. Right? It's, um, it's just not fun. Right? When, um, 
when when someone gives up, right? And that means that there's a mismatched expectation within your PvP game, right? And I'd say it's the exact same thing in PvE, of course. Um, is that if expectations are misaligned, it just leads to friction and an incredibly unfun environment. It really does. So just always remember that. Is that the games and group activities are best when everyone's working together to a common goal and everyone has like a, an understanding of what the group activity is about. That's what it is. And yeah, just to kind of go into the PvP thing again, you know, often in PvP, you'll have people who are there to be competitive, and and, and you'll also have people who are there just kind of to do dailies, right? Are either of those people wrong? No, of course not. Like, it's perfectly valid to want to just blast out a PvP game and not really worry about the outcome, just to get some dailies done. But it's also completely valid to want to be in a PvP match, not caring about rewards, only caring about winning and, and wanting to win the game. Now, you end up with problems when you bring those two types of players together, because those two ideas are a little bit incompatible in a sense, right? Like, you, you, there's going to be a little bit, a bit of friction when you have that, those two types of players together. And it's the exact same thing in PvE, right? Like, if you have one player who wants to fucking speedrun, right, and wants to really blast hard in the same group as someone who, you know, has never done it before, there's obviously going to be a bit of an issue there, right? Because that the expectations of those players are not going to be the same. And I think this is the key thing, is understanding that misaligned expectations is the root of toxicity, right? Like, um, this is the really key insight here, is that if the reason why bad situations happen is almost entirely because expectations haven't been set or haven't been respected or enforced, right? That is how you get bad behavior. That is how you have these, these negative experience happening. Um, in in Guild Wars 2, in group content. And as a result of that, like, kind of respecting the expectations and requirements that people set, and setting clear boundaries and expectations for your own groups, this is the number one way to avoid negative scenarios, right? And how you can actually mitigate having bad experiences in the LFG. Set expectations and respect the expectations of others. Very, very important to do this. And by the way, guys, this is a pug. Right, this is a pug. This is not a static group. This is a complete pug of just um, a bunch of players um, that uh, have joined, right, the group. You know, there's, there's like, people know each other from playing in the LFG multiple times together, but ultimately this is a pug group. Right, and I think there's definitely room for this type of thing on the LFG. I think it's really cool. I think it's really important that um, people might say, "Oh, if you want to have like this speedrun experience, then don't make a don't make a group on the LFG." Well, number one, that would obliterate the number of groups that are on the LFG, just overall reducing the accessibility of the game. But also, it reduces player transference, and it basically makes it it separates the community from the game. If everyone is socializing and interacting off platform, isn't that bad? I think you actually want to have stuff like this in the game because it allows players to meet each other and form connections, right? Uh, and learn from each other. You have this knowledge transference where a player who's just got to this level and is kind of ready for this stuff can take it to the next level by meeting players who have been, who are very experienced and kind of proving themselves, right? That's what this is, right? Uh, it's very important. Uh, it's very, very important to actually have stuff like this in the game, in my opinion. Uh, one of the biggest issues, um, I think, with Guild Wars 2 and the PvE scene uh, is that players don't mix, right? Everyone is in a private Discord. Everyone is completely siloed away, right? I think we want more uh, groups that set clear expectations in the LFG, not less, right? Otherwise, to be frank, you end up with NA. On NA, there isn't um, a kind of a kill-proof culture or an expectation culture. And as a result of that, the LFG is totally dead. Is the raid scene dead on NA? Actually, no. The raid scene on NA is honestly pretty good. It's just that all of it is in private discords. Because it is simply not enjoyable to be in groups that don't have clearly defined and well set expectations. Right? And so nobody does it. Everyone's like, well, if we're not allowed to make groups with kill proof, then we'll go to our own groups. If we're not allowed to set expectations, which is all kill proof is, all kill proof is, is setting expectations. And if players aren't allowed to do that, they just won't. And they'll go elsewhere. And they'll do it themselves, right? And they'll do it, um, you know, on an external platform, which is, in this case, Discord. 
But and again, I, I think it's worth noting that that's actually undesirable. We want all of the pugging, all of the players meeting players, getting to know each other, joining guilds, learning from each other. We want that in the game, right? We don't want that happening external to the game. That's why the scene appears a lot more quiet than it is, particularly on the NA server. And it's worth noting that, again, this is a cultural issue. This is something that um, we can actually change. Like, we can actually make it acceptable uh, to respect expectations and to set them. We can definitely talk about how, um, you know, we certainly need to make, um, you know, sometimes the requirements do get a little bit unhinged. But to be honest, that's because there isn't a very good way provided by the game to set expectations. So players made their own. Killproof, honestly, isn't a great metric. But you can see that it works. This is a 300 legendary insight group. Right. And although, yeah, uh, is there like a is every 300 LI player like a god level raider? Of course not. There's plenty of there's plenty of skill variants even in a group like this. Right. Um, but in a way, that's not really the point. You're missing the point there. Uh, it's that it generates you on average better results. Right. And as you can see here, significantly better results on average, which is all that this is an, an attempt to do, basically, is to guarantee some level of expectations and to set an expectation. And you can see it paying off. And here we go. That is your full strike. They even did EOD daily. Maybe just for me. Who knows? Uh, but there we go. EOD daily locked in as well. Beautiful. And there it is. Massive blast. Huge DPS. High efficiency. We love to see it. Yeah. And this is why I would really, really like to see... Um, I'd love to see a way to properly set expectations in the game. Like, uh, you know, a way that, you know, you have to have killed it at least once to join a group, right? Or some way to see a kill counter, like how many times a player has killed it. Uh, and that's important, by the way, because right now, kill proof, you can only get it once a week, basically. It's kind of annoying to get. Um, but imagine if you could just kill a boss like 10 times in a row, right? In one day even. But And you don't get loot, but it increments the kill counter. That means that you have a number that says, oh yeah, I've killed this boss 20 times, right? And you can just grind it like that. Because one of the issues with kill proof is that it's time gated. If you remove the time gate from kill proof, it becomes significant less problematic and less frustrating to deal with, I think, in a lot of these situations, right? Um, and yeah, we, I think the numbers are a little bit overkill. But again, the numbers are a bit overkill, mostly because there isn't like an official way to do it, um, um, to basically set expectations for groups. Um, and again, I really would say, think about this. The alternative is people don't use the LFG. Um, because if you don't allow players to set expectations in the game, they'll do it outside of the game, right? Because at the end of the day, this is a leisure activity and people don't want to be wiping again and again and again on content they've blasted because honestly, time efficiency is relevant there. But secondly, fun efficiency. They have to have fun in the video game and people don't like wiping, right? It's not that much fun to wipe if you've killed a boss a hundred times. And also... There is that element where you want to have good gameplay. Like, that is a totally different gameplay experience to a standard Ice Brood Saga gr um, strike group. It's a totally different experience. And it's a very enjoyable experience. I think that Guild Wars 2 really does lend itself very well to speedrunning. And having that group experience of everyone working together, it's actually extremely gratifying. It's why I personally really enjoy um, doing like the raid full clear speedruns because everyone's working together. Everyone's trying their best, relying on each other, communicating, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun. And I think Guild Wars 2 gameplay really leans into that extremely well. Uh, so it's no surprise that a lot of players enjoy that, right? You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. It's very important stuff. Um, but yeah, that was actually the fastest Whisper Freighter Bones going to anchor this patch so far. That's what we like to see. We love to see it. Fantastic stuff. Big, 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 big. Yeah, there we go. Oh, <laughs> there it is, guys. New fastest log on Whisper of Joy. That's it, guys. You know, the Frugal Fighter uh, is in the mix, I guess. Although, wait, was that? I think that might not be. T is that today, actually? Um, maybe actually, I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, look, there we go, guys. There we, there we are. We're in the mix, guys. The strike records. CMC can't stop me. The microtransaction enjoyer is getting the, the strike records right now. We love to see it. <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is very, very funny. And I think that a really good thing to point out here is that this actually goes both ways too. Like, I think it's really important that, um, when you make, if a new player makes a group, um, you might, you won't, you shouldn't expect it to be a speed run, right? Um, you shouldn't expect to necessarily kill at first try or to have a clean kill because everyone's learning. 
right? So setting expectations is not just important for try-hard groups. It's also extremely important for groups at all levels. This is not simply a, oh, an elite thing. No, this is the opposite. This is a global thing. Setting expectations is so important at all levels of play. And I think I'd actually um, point out a great example of this. is actually the Guild Wars 2 boot camp. This is a project that I'm running where I'm taking 10... Uh, new players through raids and we're actually going to work up to clearing Harvest Temple challenge mode. And do you know why it's working so well? Do you know why we're absolutely crushing raids and even challenge modes? And, and seriously, these players, they play, they've play they played instance content for less than a month. About, about a month now to be a little, actually a little bit over a month. Because yeah, oh, time flies. It's actually May now, isn't it? Seriously, set the, the reason why it works so well is because I set expectations and i said this is what we're doing this is our goal if you want in great if this doesn't sound like it's for you hey that's totally cool but this isn't for you uh and I, th that was a different and it's really important that was a different type of expectation i didn't ask for kill proof. in fact i actually specifically said that they couldn't have raid experience so i did anti-kill proof right um but i said yeah you've got to be new you've got to be willing to learn be willing to re-roll your class, be willing to show up, or, you know, at a specific time, right, and put the work in, right, and put the, you know, listen to me, and they did this, and as a result of that, we're having an amazing time, an incredibly positive social experience, and of course, great results in the game too, so again, this is not just about setting expectations to make your, you know, super special snowflake speedrun team, this ultimately is how you combat negative experiences at all levels of play, it's all about making sure people are on the same page and expectations are set and respected, right? Uh, it is completely unreasonable for a, a, you know, an experienced player to join a training group and expect to kill at first try or complain about low DPS. That player's an asshole and you should kick them. However, it's also unreasonable for um, a completely new player to join a highly experienced group that's a essentially looking for a bit of a speed run. That player, and this is the important thing, that player is being toxic and they should be removed, right? Both of those situations are toxic and contribute to why players don't use the LFG. Because one, uh, that sucks, that might be frustrating, Secondly, and here's the really important insight, it's not fun to kick people. It's actually really uncomfortable. Um, you, you know, I think it's very easy to visualize, say, you know, a, a raid leading commander as like a mustachioed villain who's like, oh, I can't wait to kick this player who's got 3k DPS. I can't wait. No, I no, almost, I don't think I've ever encountered a commander who actually likes kicking people. Seriously, I don't think I've ever seen it. Um... It's actually not fun. No one likes to be the bad guy. Nobody likes to be the villain who says, actually, you can't play with us, right? Actually, no, uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to remove you from the group. That isn't fun, right? That's not enjoyable. It's, it's actually a very stressful situation. Um, and definitely for me, dude, I, I'm, I'm terrible at kicking people. Anyone who's watched my stream will know that I can't do it. Uh, it it's actually a serious personal value. I actually can't do it. Seriously, um... It's not good. It's something I've got to work at. I need to be better at kicking people because it actually leads to some <laughs> pretty scuff scenarios sometimes when I don't kick people from groups. Uh, and as a result of this, it's important to consider that, I think, uh, is that it's, it's a toxicity that drives people away from using the LFG because they don't want to be a villain and because they don't want to be frustrated, right? And this, in my opinion, this kind of conversation that we had here is one of the biggest issues with um, group content in Guild Wars 2, is that the culture has problems with it. The way the community interacts is an issue. And there's a bit of complexity here as well. Um, I think it's worth noting that I think a lot of the reason why um, people join groups that don't match expectations in other words they kind of break the rules in a way is desperation players go there's literally no group i'm gonna have to just yolo and try this and i understand that like that is a problem and that ultimately is because players don't feel empowered to create their own group that's something that we should also work on there's a systemic issue there as well i think the commander tag is put on a bit of a pedestal i think we shouldn't hold commanders to basically having to hard carry every single run I think there's a lot of pressure uh, on commanders. It's a systemic thing. I really think that parties and squads should be merged so a tag isn't special. It's like, oh yeah, I just made a group, right? I think one of the issues with the game is that making a group, making a squad is like, oh, 
I paid 300 gold, this guy paid 300 gold. Oh, it's different. This is not a party. This is a totally different thing. It kind of makes it, it, the game almost says this is a special thing. This is a special person. Whereas in reality, making a, seriously, this is so wild to me. This is so wild. Can you imagine making a group in an online MMORPG being seen as a special thing? More than just one of the most basic fundamental building blocks of the gameplay? That is wild. The fact that that's how it is in Guild Wars 2 is absurd, to be honest. It is absurd. It's unworkable. It is unacceptable that that is the way we have the game culturally, that, ooh, ooh, creating a squad, this is a big deal. No. Making a group in an MMO is not a big deal, and it shouldn't be. It, it, it's ridiculous that it is, right? That needs to be solved. And that's something that, again, I think can be fixed systemically by removing the gold price and merging squads and parties so they're the same unified system to make it more of a normalized thing, for sure. But also culturally, I do think that Guild Wars 2 um, there is a weird game. Like, essentially, one player does all of the work, organizes the subgroups, tags up, might give instructions, right? Might tell people what to do, places markers, and you've got everyone else who says nothing, never interacts, and does nothing. That's an issue. It should be a lot more of a group effort. It should be a lot more of a group coordinated and back and forth, like two-way street, rather than a commander just doing all of the work. That's too much pressure. It's systemic and cultural. It's a multifaceted issue uh, here as well. And, and I think that really leads into this because when players feel like the only way they can get into content is to join um, someone else's group, that's when you have the communication breakdown. That's when you have the expectations being misaligned and falling apart and lines being crossed, boundaries being crossed. That's how you get the toxicity. That's how you get the, oh, I got kicked. The, all this kill proof is ridiculous. That's how you get hi spiraling higher kill proof groups. And ultimately, that's how you get players entirely moving off platform because they simply don't want to deal with the system, right? They're like, no, fuck this. I'm out. I don't want to deal with this. The system is, is not good. The culture isn't working, right? People are desperate. I'm going to go on Discord, right? And I'm never going to use this system ever again. And that is why the LFG um, in Guild War Suit, and ultimately, I think, kind of group content is currently struggling right now. Um, that's what's going on here. We must fix this. We need... Players to feel empowered, especially new players. Um, and I guess one final word on this is... This is a weird one, too. The Guild Wars 2 scene is incredibly top-heavy. Most players who raid and complete strikes, and do fractals even, are very experienced. There are not that many new players... Uh, in the game, uh, getting into the content. There's a lot of people who are experienced, but not that many new players. So to be frank, there aren't enough new players to form groups efficiently, right? And a, a big part of that is, I think, is because new players don't feel empowered to make groups. They don't stick. They bounce off the, they bounce off the content, right? They're like, oh, yeah, GG, right? I can't make a group because uh, I don't feel like I can. I've got to join someone else's, but there are no groups to me. Oh, no, it's over. So the real important thing is we need to empower people to do this, right? Um, to help equalize the scene and create more resources for players to feel confident in learning their build, um, making a group, trying out this content, because it's really not that bad. Like strike content, fractal content, even raid content, it's not that hard. Um, you know, you really can, uh, like I think that any player in Guild Wars 2 can learn and conquer this content relatively easily if they so want to. Uh, it's just a case of having the resources, having the, you know, the, the confidence to do this. That's what we really need to give players there as well.